No. Did Linda bother to get anything to eat while I was out? Uh, no. Oh. Well, you're both bone idle, both of you. You'd starve before you'd serve yourself, wouldn't you? Where is she, anyway? She's gone home. She's gone where? You heard. Well, why? Don't ask me. I suppose she can go home if she wants to. Well, she might have let me know. I bought in for the weekend for her. She, uh, just decided sudden-like. Oh, I see. And what did you say to push her out? Who told you I said anything? Nobody said anything, but I know you're bold. Come on, let's be having it. She's left your note. Where? Up there. I'm surprised you didn't burn it. Thank you. Mmm. Mmm, what? Dear Mother, our Dennis is a dirty little rat. I can't stand him a minute longer, so I am going home. Love, Linda. Well, if you're very proud of yourself, that's all. Doesn't worry me. No, no, it wouldn't. You see, you're not like ordinary people. You've got no feelings, you haven't. Well, don't sit there sulking. Answer me. You're just not natural, you are not. Did it ever occur to you that she's pregnant? She's in a nervous condition. What am I supposed to do about it? Start knitting? Oh, my lad, you would soon change your tune when you become a father. Oh, it's not changed me tune. You want your meals for dust? I'd emigrate Oh, first. yes, and what country would have you with your record? Here we go again. It's always the same. We can't have argument without you bring that up. Oh, shut up. about getting married anyway. We all have nightmares. You're just not natural, you're What's not. natural about wanting to get caught? Well, we've all got to settle down sometime, you Mother, know. I'm 22. Yes, and I'd be married four years by the time I was your age. Well, you're not exactly an advertisement for wedded bliss, are you? Good God. What? And don't say God. I, Mrs. Elsie Tanner, give due warning that I will, from this date onward, take legal action against anyone uttering slanderous statements against my good name. Did you put that in yourself? Well, I did go to school, you know. What's it supposed to do? It's meant to shut Ina Sharp as lying cake hole. That's what it's supposed to do. Where are you going? Out. And it's none of your business. Uttering slanderous statements against my good name. Well, go to the foot of our stairs. Who do you think's been saying things? Well, who do you think? Hey, I haven't the foggiest. Well, who does all the talking round here? Uh, I couldn't rightly say. You couldn't rightly say? You must have cloth ears. Well, God bless Elsie Tanner, that's all I can say. God bless Elsie. It's about time someone clammed down on Ina. How do you know it's Ina she's getting at? Who else could it be? Oh, it could be anybody. Oh, aye, right. it could be Kaiser Bill. I've got you there, it couldn't be dead. Stands to reason it, Ina. All I'm saying is it doesn't say nothing in black and white. That's what I'm saying. Why, it mentions no names. She doesn't need to. Shh, keep your voice down. Ina will hear you. Oh, let her. I think my lady's been brought down a lump or two tonight. But whoever do you think it can be? Oh, it's somebody in that frock shop she works at. There's an awful lot of gossip goes on in frock shops. Ooh, some people are wicked. There's that Elsie Tanner, as nice a young woman as you could ever hope to meet. Give her a last evening. I know, but some folk can't let well alone. Makes you think, doesn't it? Aye, they say the devil takes care of his own, but he certainly forgot poor Elsie. Good evening. Evening, Elsie. Gin and tonic, please. Gin and tonic. Hello. Hello. Is it still as cold out? Perishing. I'm about due for a bath, but I keep putting it off yeah. and putting it off. <laughs> it's the sort of weather that makes you want to stay dirty, isn't it? I saw tonight's paper. I just hope somebody else has, that's all. I mean, that matter could break something. Well, you've put the announcement in now. Yes, I know. It's making me feel such a fool. Oh, nonsense. Of course you're not. Oh, when I saw it in cold print there, I, Mrs. Elsie Tanner, that, it makes me blood run up and cold when I think about it. Well, you've done it now, haven't you? Of course she's got to take legal action now. I mean to say, whoever's been doing the talk is not going to take this line down now, are they? Well, I'm sure I wouldn't know. I've never been one to get mixed up in other people's business. It'll be in front of a judge and jury before you can say donkey stone. And I shouldn't be a bit surprised if a certain person who is sitting not ten yards away from here weren't to be brought up from the cells in handcuffs. Oh, never say that. I am saying it. Do you mean Martha? I make no mention of names, but there's a certain woman as comes in this snug, and you know who I mean when I say she looks like a weasel in specs, as has got a big mouth. Oh, did you hear what she said just then? Right. Now, don't do nothing of yourself before Martha. Oh. Even a worm can turn, you know. 
Nothing like a nice old saying, is the mini? I've been keeping me ears cocked. Right, well, I'll remind you of another one. Listeners here no good of themselves. You'll excuse me interrupting you, but... Oh, um, don't worry, Elsa. This lady's just going. This lady's not going anywhere till she's had her say. Well, do you mind if I get mine in first? I trust you've seen this evening's paper. I have that, and believe me, Elsa, you have my pity. I don't shut want to... Shut up, you, and I'm warning you. If you don't learn to keep that flaming lying gob of yours shut, you're for the eye jump. Oh, nice language. Beautiful. Somebody never went to Sunday school. And what exactly am I supposed to have said? You know. I want to know what I have been saying. More than enough. Well, it's a free country, you know. All right, I will say something. Something I've kept to myself. Kept in the bosom of the beginning art for years and years. Oh, well. Come on, let's be having it. For years and years, I've shut my eyes and ears to the goings-on at number 11, Coronation Street. And what exactly are the goings-on you refer to? Oh, yes, well, you might flush her. We all know what your war work was. From 1939 to 1945, number 11, Coronation Street was just Liberty Hall. It was always a surprise to me that come VJ Day, them youngs didn't take it down stone by stone and rebuild it in the United States of America. Have you anything more to say? Yes, plenty. Cast your mind back to VJ Day, madam. Cast it back. Two Yanks held the ladder up to the front of your house while you toddled up and hung out a banner that said, God bless Monty and the boys. Never in the memory of God have I known such downright sarcasm and no, don't talk to me at all. Now listen, I'm doing the talking and I'm telling you this. Is it true that you've been putting it around that I've been carrying on with a fella? But you are, aren't you? Not that it's any of your business, but just for your information, that happens to be my husband. It is my silver wedding next year and I also have my marriage lines to prove it. More's the pity. Good night, Tina. Oh, Anita. You've got a dewdrop on the end of your nose. Same again, girls. Hello, you all up. And thank you for a lovely evening. As long as you've enjoyed yourself, I am happy. It was classical. <laughs> When are you going to invite me in? At this hour of the morning. Whatever do you think Mrs. Moore could say? Oh, she'll be in bed. Yes, and that's where you should be too. All right, then. Show me the way to go, Moore. <laughs> <laughs> you want to waken the whole street up? Tired, I don't oh, want to go to Harry, bed. stop it now. All right, then. Give us a little kiss oh, in the way. Oh, get on with you. <laughs> Had a little drink about an hour ago. have had more than one ago. little drink, and that's a fact. Oh, come on, give us a kiss. You've been on my and beer. That's what you've been on. There now. Are you satisfied? <laughs> yeah, give us another. I don't know what's got into you, Harry Hewitt. <laughs> now, will you go home like a good boy? <gasps> Harry! Harry, come out of here. Service. Come on, now. Let's have less of these shenanigans. <laughs> I'm just having a little sit down. Oh, come on, now, before you lose me, my reputation and me job. Come on, Harry. I've never been barred from a pub. <gasps> I've never been barred from a pub before, and I don't see why I should start now. All right, Look, then. all you want is to get to bed, and that's just yeah. for your call. Oh. <laughs> Cool, I take my ease. Look, she can take your ease anywhere you like, as long as it's not here. Oh, come on, Harry. Fair's fair. What's Mrs. Walker going to say if she comes down and finds you in this condition? She'll say now there's a... She'll say now there's a lad who's been enjoying himself. Quite right, so everybody come. should enjoy themselves. Harry, come on. Come on, then. Let's start. Oh, Harry! <laughs> <laughs> now, will you get this into your head? Are you listening? Certainly, I'm a gentleman. Well, if you're a gentleman, then act like one. If you're not out of here in five seconds, I'll fetch you one over the head with a bottle, so help me, I will. You don't mean that. Will you please go? Is that you, Constructor Love? Out. Out. Are you, Mr. Tatlock? Mr. Tatlock, are you all right? Oh, oh. 
Ah. I don't know whoever thought of sending me this. What? This. Come in the post. So you too want to be a 14 stone E-man of might and muscle? Uh, what do you have to do? Dunno. Oh, yes. Send ten quid. Oh. Well, it wasn't you by any chance, was it, big brother? Oh, David, answer that door. There's a good lad. Hey, I don't know what our David does with his shirts. I sometimes think he must clean his bike down with them. Here, let me do that. Oh, thank you, love. Yeah. Mother, have I got a key for Dadlock's? I think there's one somewhere. Why? Well, I can't get any answer and there are noises coming from his lobby. Oh, dear. Have a look in the spill jar. I'll look in my bag just to be on the safe side, but I don't think it's here. Oh, uh, there's uh, one on the front room windowsill. No, that's your grandma's. Oh. There's nothing in here. No, there's one in this bag. I have a... Chances are we gave it back to him. Didn't he answer you at all? Oh, there were just these sounds. Dear, what shall we do? Oh, I banged and banged. Oh. We'll just have to break the door down. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, I do. Come on, Ken. Oh, come on. All right. I'm perfectly all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just come over a bit dizzy-like. I see. Well, perhaps uh, Mrs. Barlow would be kind enough to take this prescription to the chemist for you. You'll find their tablets. I want you to take one after every meal. But there's nothing up with me. I'll look in again see you tomorrow. Oh, well, it's a pity you haven't got something better to do with your time. And you're old. I shouldn't bother if I were you, because that and I'll be out. Oh, no, you won't. You're going to stay in, take things quietly for a time. Oh, I am, am I? You are. And who's going to make me? Now, look. If you're not prepared to take my advice, why bother sending for me? I didn't. It was that nosy Parker of a milkman. And I did. Why did you let him break me door down? Well, how do you think? We was worried stiff. I mean, to say anything might have happened. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Now, you do as you're told, and you'll be good for plenty more years. All right, all right. Can I have some jam on the spoon afterwards? <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it is good of you to come so quickly, Doctor. Yeah. Can I have a word with you, Mrs. Barlow? Yes, of course, Doctor. And you sit still. And you shut up. Oh, I'll give you what for in <laughs> half a minute. Whereabouts does that daughter of his live? The other side of town. Ah. Do you think she'd have him? You mean just for the time being, till he starts to mend? I mean for good and all. Oh. Bye. Ta-ra. And what do you think you're doing? I've told you to sit still. There now. Shall I get you a cup of tea? Well? Well, what? Well, what's the secret? Well, there's no secret. Oh, I see. Then perhaps you'll tell me why you and Dr. Tinsley were having a conflab in my lobby. Well, it was just... No, 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 it was nothing. Gee, I know. Nothing more vexing than somebody that starts to tell a nice juicy bit and then stops halfway. Well, he wanted to know where your Beatrice lives. Oh, and I suppose you told him. And you suppose wrong. I didn't know her address. And while we're on the subject, I think perhaps you'd better tell me what it is. What for? Oh, well, it might come in useful sometime. Oh, aye, our Beatrice address will be very useful. You can hang it on the wall. Happen you might put a frame round it and stick it on top of your piano. Come on, what is it? No. Now, I asked you nicely. Now, look, I don't know. Now, be careful. Remember what the doctor said. You mustn't go making me poorly. Men. <laughs> Door down. 
I'm from Shoropsis. From where? Shoropsis. Don't mean a thing to me. I, are you Mrs. May Hardman? No. Is she in? When will she be in? She won't. She's dead. Oh. I'm a daughter. I'm very sorry. That's all right. Look, can I help you? What's it to do with? Well, that makes it a bit awkward, you. Yeah. Um, look, perhaps I'd better go and have a word with the boss, eh? What about? The doings. What doings? Look, let's leave it for time being, eh, and I'll go... Well, you might just as well explain. It looks so like you're going to have to sooner or later. Yeah. Well, um, this is a matter of a bill what's outstanding. And... Hello, Christine. Hello. Morning. Mm. Oh, will you come inside? There's no use talking on the step. And sit yourself down. Right, thank you. <coughs> What's this bill for? We're plumbers. Well, we haven't had any plumbing done in years. Well, this is a bill for uh, for an item of bathroom furniture. We haven't got a bathroom. Well, in here it's. Oh, you mean the seat for down the yard? Oh, she paid for that. Well, not according to our books. Well, how much is it for? It's um. It's for, it's for one pound, one and three. That includes fitting it in and all the things. One pound, that... one and three. Oh, oh, I'm sure it must have been paid. Y yeah, yeah, well, um, well, perhaps I'd better go back and check. Would it be any trouble? Well, well, no. It... Well, I mean, I don't want to make it awkward for you, you know. You don't want to bother about me. I know, but the boss might wonder what you're playing at. He does that all the time. Oh. Oh, well, look, if, if your records say it hasn't been paid, it won't have been. I was only saying it had been, you know, just open. Here, give it to me and I'll put it with all the rest. Do you, do you, do you live here by yourself? Yeah. And, and do you have to pay rent and everything like that? For you? Well, nobody else is going to, are they? I was only wondering. Well, you needn't worry. I'll pay you. I wasn't worrying. Well, your bosses, then. You can tell them I earn good money and I don't like owing people. It's just that they'll have to wait. I suppose if I lived in a nice posh house up Grange Fold, they wouldn't mind waiting six months, but just because I lived... Hey, in... Now, steady, steady on. It isn't worth bothering your head over, is it? Well, just tell them that, will you? I'll do more than that. I'll take it back with me. Here, I said no. Now, look, bosses can make mistakes like anyone else, can't they, now? Well, all right, but you needn't bother. I'll end up by paying it. You don't know your luck. Um, uh, could I just have your name? Uh, your first name? Just for the books, like. Oh, Christine Ardman. Christine. I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm to see you at the pally. No, I don't go. No, no, I don't go myself, either. You know much, but... I thought perhaps I'd seen you there, you know. No. Right, then. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Hey! Oh. <laughs> I forgot my bag. Yeah, I'd just seen it. Yeah. Right plumber I am. <laughs> Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Dad, you're just being ridiculous. Oh, well, maybe I am, but it just so happens I don't want to come. Well, thank you. But I'd still like to know who told you. Well, it's no secret, Mrs. Barlow told me. She knows my married name, so she looked it up in the telephone book. And don't go blaming her for it, she did the right thing. If your own daughter can't take care of you, who can? Now, BJ, there's no good going getting all up like. You know me, or you're out too by now, and if I can't fancy an idea, I can't fancy it. So that's an end to it. There's not an end to it at all. The doctor thinks you'd be better with me. Oh, the doctor can go and jump in the canal. But what have you got against the idea? Now, look, you've got your own lives to lead. You don't want to have to be bothered with an old cop like me. Now, that's not true, and you know it. Well, all right, if you say so. But I'm not budging. <sighs> 
Hey, Mom, where's my nail file? What? I said, where's my nail file? Are you going to do for garden or something? I told you before, get out of my handbag. I'm only looking for yours. Well, you needn't bother, it's not there. Oh, and I wish you'd stop that filthy habit. Why don't you use the scissors? Where are they, then? I don't know. Upstairs on my dressing table, I suppose. Thanks for nothing. Hey, come here a minute. Let's have a look at you. What's this in here, Doc? Twenty-two and a double chin coming what? on. What? Yeah. And I'll have half a crown out of you while I think I'm... You'll what? Yes, I will. And don't say you haven't got it, because I know you have. You earn good money at that club of yours, even though you pretend you don't. Come on. Well, I'm not throwing it your way. What's it for, anyway? For charity. And before you say it's not the sort that begins at home. What charity? Must you know everything? I have to know where my money's going, not that you're going to get any. Oh, am I not? Well, if you must know, I'm sending it to the Congo. The co And you needn't look like that, it's not funny. What's got into you? I don't know, but some it has. You know, I was watching that programme on television the other night and it turned my stomach over. That'll be the day. What were you drinking? Nothing. I was stone cold sober and that didn't make it any better. Them poor little kids with their shriveled up arms and legs. Oh, it's no good talking to you. Don't come in. You'll never get as far as post office. May I remind you, you were collecting toys for the hospital Christmas for two flipping months and they're still there under my flaming bed. There's always next Christmas and we'll have less of this flaming language, if you don't mind, and half a crown. All right. There. Go on, I'm waiting. No. What's got into me? I'm very impressed, if you must know. Oh. And that's quite something coming from you. So you should be. Any biscuits left here? I don't know. Oh. That programme. You know, Dorothy Greenhouse couldn't look. I know, I saw it. It was worse in the paper. I saw that too. Yeah. I'm surprised. I never thought you'd got past the pictures. Well, you thought wrong, didn't you? There. That's that. I do wish they'd have shorter addresses. I've wasted two pennies of ink filling up this envelope. What are you sending it there for, then? Because I have to send it somewhere. I picked this one out with a pin. There was three in the paper. Oh, they're all all right. Oh, well, I'd be very pleased to know that you think so, I'm sure. By the way, I suppose it would be expecting too much of you to ask you to go and pop this in the post office and get me a post along. Aye, aye, I thought that were coming. I just don't happen to pass a post office on my way to work. I never said I wouldn't. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That's very kind of you. Oh, it's nothing. Hey, and think on, I want the counterfoil back for that postal order. Have you seen that old shaving brush? What old shaving brush? You know, the one we used for stippling when I did the front room the other week. What do you want that for? I just asked you, have you seen it? You don't tell me you've started shaving. Oh, oh, I think I'll. Just a minute. <clears throat> I noticed that devil this morning. Yeah. Oh, Tar. What in heaven's name do you think you're doing? I'm giving myself a face pack, and I don't want you to speak to me once it's on. I'm supposed to have 15 minutes quiet, supposed to relax, and I've two slices of cucumber over my eyes, but I left a blasted thing on the bus. Yeah. Oh, well. I'll go. And what the hell do you think you're doing here? I've come to have a talk. Well, you've come to the wrong shop. We are just about to observe 15 minutes silence. <laughs> <laughs> 